several networks and this is the outline of the, this uh, presentation uh, but this uh, opportunity I would also like to take uh, this chance to advertise our department a little bit because maybe you is not familiar with uh, this uh, team in Vilaso uh, so in the very beginning I will uh, have two slides on this so we are in uh, the research domain <coughs> of uh, networks and networking which is the global domain and uh, our department is called triple play uh, wireless networks, uh, TWN, but you can simply forget the triple, but it doesn't matter. So it is more about the wireless networks. And, uh, and then I will go into the details of this talk. Uh, first, uh, the background introduction uh, for cell, small and macro cell networks. And it's mainly about the radio resource optimization. And the tool we use in this uh, world is uh, Gibbs Sampler. I will go into details. And for power control, for user association problems, and uh, channel assignment, allocation or selection, people will say. And uh, finally, I will show you some numerical results and the conclusion. So this is the scope of this talk. So this is the advertisement. Uh, so we are in a department uh, for wireless networks. So uh, the topics of covering this uh, department uh, Especially at this moment, it's about, for example, the SON, uh, we call it the self-organizing networks for 3G, UMTS, <laughs> LTE networks, or the long-term evolution. And uh, under this uh, uh, SON uh, topic, uh, it's more about the uh, radio resource allocation and optimizations, about the side algorithm, about the performance evaluation modeling uh, for transmission power, the power control, user association, uh, channel selection. And uh, also, for example, in terms of uh, multiple cell uh, pulsing, or people may call it a uh, coordinated multiple uh, transmission. And uh, it is a little bit uh, double E as well, uh, for example, related to uh, multiple input, multiple output uh, system, precoding or interference alignment. The main purpose is to have uh, intercell interference uh, coordination, so to mitigate interference between one another. And this is uh, one of the main themes. And another very uh, a uh, hot topic uh, in the department is uh, about the small cell networks. So, uh, for example, in terms of uh, femtocells, cells, <coughs> could be 3G or LTE. And today, uh, under the small cell, we, uh, we have the macro cell and we have small cells, so we mix together. So there are some new problems uh, in terms of uh, heterogeneous cellular networks. And the main issue here is about the capacity, the, about the coverage, about the outage for PED. And we have to deal with uh, handover mobility measurement as well, because you will move from one cell to another, and as long as the cell is small, the handover frequency may be higher, and you have to find a way uh, efficient in terms of uh, spectrum efficiency, power, and spatial reuse. And another new topic there is more about uh, the green networking, <coughs> so which is about uh, the transmission power, how to have uh, energy efficiency uh, wireless infrastructure, which may be not only in terms of wireless domain, but also in the wireless domain as well. And some other topics which I, uh, uh, we are not very active, but some uh, colleagues are in this domain, in this department. I mean, uh, they are very active in our department, but some members are uh, related to the topics on massive mobile internet of things uh, in the department. For example, about the authorization and model scheme and uh, femto, uh, same sign of cognitive radios. And also there are some uh, colleagues working on uh, different topics like uh, heterogeneous wireless access. <coughs> so consider you have uh, FEMTO and you have Wi-Fi access at the same time, and how can you uh, integrate the two together and to have uh, a seamless uh, over, uh, handover and have smooth traffic uh, delivery. So it may deal with the mobility man management connectivity issues and uh, about the traffic engineering and also uh, security problems there as well. 
And there's also one team, uh, uh, a small group in the uh, a group in the department uh, deal with uh, video traffic uh, uh, condition control. So it's more about the quality of service uh, and user experience. So uh, other related issue uh, is that, for example, we have some uh, testbed for LTE uh, built on open air interface. So in order to uh, have uh, the performance evaluation or test of protocols on this platform for LTE specifically. So this is about uh, some other activities. So I will go into the details of, of my talk, which uh, is about small cell. So uh, the background of uh, this work is uh, about uh, the future of wireless networks. So uh, generally speaking, we are talking about, uh, we are going to provide uh, more capacity for the user as the traffic goes uh, expense. So uh, we know that we can have three uh, domains to improve the network capacity. For example, to, uh, to have a better efficiency in terms of the transmission scheme, like uh, moderation and hardware design, etc. And secondly, we can do something in terms of the spectrum allocation. So we give more bandwidth in the radio spectrum, so we can have a, a linearly uh, uh, increase in the capacity. And thirdly, we can do some other scheme. We increase the number of cells. And we know that uh, uh, the gain we can obtain from this uh, free uh, category is quite different, especially uh, in the first and second category in terms of the technology for efficiency and uh, increase in spectrum. It is very uh, limited. And we know that uh, the limit has been nearly achieved. So the hope for the future to increase the capacity is mainly in terms of small cells. So we have to uh, densify the network to increase uh, the bit per second per hertz, and also uh, by using small cell, we can uh, enhance the spectrum efficiency and power efficiency as well. So in terms of uh, bit per second per hertz per power, so small cell is a very important technology in the future for us. So uh, generally speaking, uh, we have the micro, uh, the micro, pico, and femto. So more or less, we are talking about small cell is about this category. But uh, it is obvious that in the future we have the macro and small cell assistant uh, at the same time in our network. So it will be overlap uh, in uh, the future networks. And one may consider that, okay, uh, small cell may be only deployed indoor, but this is not true. In the future, you will see that uh, uh, small cell will be deployed both indoor and outdoor. So it is not only put in your office, home, or some uh, enterprise, in the business office with some uh, small <coughs> size uh, devices which can support, for example, four user per base station per small cell or up to uh, uh, 64. But you can also deploy this uh, in outdoor environment so you can support uh, much larger users. And there are some uh, new products uh, in Nokia, like the uh, light radio, etc., which is going to uh, realize uh, this uh, uh, scenario. So, uh, uh, certainly, it is not only about the hardware, about the base station, it is also about the uh, network design architect architecture, so about the backhauling options. So I just uh, give you a very uh, general overview of the network, which could be with the small cell. So uh, we have to deal with a small cell network as well. So in the future, you may have a macro cell, metro, and pico, etc., and you have a, a, a single network there in order to coordinate all these uh, devices. And the number of cells could be very large because of small cell. So you need to have a distributed and a coordination among this large number of the cells. And we will have a distributed remote radio hand as well. So the future will be about the future multi-cell inter-coordination and distributed algorithms in this domain. And I will go into our solution. And before going to that, the motivation of this work is uh, to develop some mathematical tools in order to operate distributely and scalable to the network size without heavy coordination. So this is a typical uh, layout of the uh, traditional cellular network we consider in that way. And uh, with the uh, auto-configuration or self-optimization of the network, we hope to re relax the heavy requirement of human resources and efforts in this uh, network planning optimization. So it will reduce the cost and uh, for example, uh, in, in, in the coming uh, slides, I will use the location uh, BS, stands for base station, uh, mobile user, MS, 
And then uh, B stands for base station, and UV stands for two of the users. And the results are in this uh, uh, model could be channel, so which could be in terms of frequency, uh, time, so on, or code division, so which is uh, spreading code, for example. In terms of power, how much power you are going to use to transmit from the base station to the user. And uh, thirdly, it is about the user attachment, how, which base station uh, this user are attached to, which uh, you have multiple cells in the geographical area. So the general picture is that you would like to have some uh, distributed output form, conduct local operation. So the input, which is some local measurement in terms of measurement of uh, interference SNR ratio. And then the output will be some uh, global utility optimization, which in terms of, for example, throughput delay, fairness, or energy efficiency. So this is the general uh, uh, theme of the, the work. And the system, this is uh, one of the examples of the system we have to deal with. So uh, this is a uh, uh, LTE system uh, in the uh, dark name uh, scenario. So I have a uh, multiple base station, which could be a large metal cell or small cell. And then uh, I have uh, several users, for example, two here. So the transmission is uh, from here to the user U there. So this uh, I call it the signal. And then which will, due to this transmission, you, uh, you have the path loss because of the propagation. And at the same time, this uh, transmission at that point will generate uh, interference to receive the signal at the other point. So in the scenario, you have the signal and interference. And at the same time, uh, clearly, uh, the user here will receive interference from the other two transmitters. So this is the general picture. And you can do a power control, for example, the shrinking the cell size or expand it uh, by the power capability. And the resources we mentioned here is in terms of, for example, in LTE, the superior or the time slot. So in the time domain, uh, you can divide the time into a time slot. In the frequency domain, you can divide it into subband. So a user may be allocate, for example, A, several resources element here. And B may be uh, allocated with the other uh, elements, and C here, corresponding to the path loss and then gain uh, attenuation factor there. So this is generally speaking what we mean by physical uh, resource brought here. Or you can simply say, OK, you have some channel there. You are going to give this uh, element or resources to your user. And you will put the corresponding power in this uh, block in order to uh, corresponding to the distance or the path loss. So it's simple. We are going to design algorithms, which could be decentralized. But we know that uh, to solve this kind of optimization is usually very challenging because the optimization uh, function is in general on convex. If it is convex, it could be more efficient to find the optimal solution, even if you allow it to do centralized control or uh, optimization. And uh, there are some extra uh, difficulties, uh, for example, in LTE, which are due to uh, the multi carrier assignment. So a user will take multiple elements from this uh, block. So the complexity will be increased. But in this talk, I will uh, just talk about a simple case. So the question I would like to deal with here is that uh, how individual nodes or user can op op uh, cooperate together to support intercell interference management in a self-organized manner. So we have. Excuse me. Yes. <coughs> I'm not sure I understood which assumption you took for backholding the femtocells, which basically disappeared. Uh, in the, uh, the, the messaging uh, between the femto cell and the macro cell, mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we consider you have the S2 and uh, X2 and S1 interface. So in the, uh, for example, in terms of packet in the internet connection. So it is about the wireline uh, network. You can communicate. So in, uh, for the femto cell, when you come into the internet, you can talk to the femto, uh, macro uh, directly in the macro network. So it is no wireless in that sense. So uh, what is the difficulty in this uh, problem when we deal with small and macro cell? So once you go into the topic of heterogeneous nature in terms of power, okay, it is not about the packet size here, but it is about the power in the physical domain or radio resource management. Then the cell size will be different because uh, similarly, uh, look at this example. This uh, macro very powerful base station will have a very comparatively high transmission power, and uh, this small cell will have small power. Relatively, 
And then you, we can consider, okay, you have a user here, which is a user of the macro cell, which is the edge of this big cell. So the signal received from this macro cell will be very big weight because of this large distance. And as long as this user is close to the transmitter, which is a small cell, so your neighborhood, so you will experience a strong interference because of this small cell. So in this kind of scenario, you will have a more difficult, more difficult scenario because of this uh, uh, geographical location. So you have to pay attention to how to deal with uh, this uh, uh, difficulty. So generally speaking, the user here will get a very weak SINR level. And one of the solutions is that, OK, if it is open access, you should switch the attachment from this uh, macro to the small cell, or you, to, you have to do something in order to help this user to improve their uh, SNR quality, <coughs> which could be in terms of a user attachment, which I write a U, UA, user attachment, channel assignment, you use a volcano channel for these two pair of transmissions, or you do some uh, job optimization uh, in general, and we know that uh, if you just do power control, it doesn't work. Because of what you can do for this user, you use the maximum power, but anyway, it doesn't really have much because it's really far away. Even if you use maximum power, the SNR is still anyway low in this point. So in some case, uh, you have to use power control, as mentioned here. So for example, in this example, I show that uh, uh, power control will works. For example, uh, uh, you have the user of the base station, you have some user there, and you try to increase or decrease the power in order to not to interfere one another that much. So you can do some power control in some cases. And for these cases, uh, for example, in the very beginning, you may attach uh, this user to this uh, base station, which is far away. Now you know that you should not do it this way, so you switch the connection to the small cell, and which will increase the SNR at this point. And for example, in this case, it's, it's more difficult. Suppose that uh, the distance from this uh, two user to the macro is more or less in the same distance, uh, in the right hand side and also in the left hand side. So even if you switch or use a, a different power, the SNR level here doesn't improve. So what should you do? Maybe you should consider to use a different channel. So you divide the channel to two or four channel parts, and you support the two users in different colors. So this will significantly enhance the SNR level at the two receivers. So you have two different types of optimization, and you may consider to have the joint optimization together. Sorry, uh, here you mean uh, by I mean not touching the power and changing the frequencies? Yes. So let's say uh, you can you have if we assume uh, you have a fixed power, so you you are not allowed to tune the power anymore. All the power level is the same. Uh, you have a orthogonal channel, which that means that uh, there's no interference from the other. Because uh, simply you divide the channel bandwidth half <coughs> for this transmission and the other bandwidth from this many, one. How many uh, I mean, uh, frequencies can you allocate? Is it uh, huge? It could be uh, a large number, for example, uh, 64 or even uh, much larger, depends on. So for example, uh, we know that uh, uh, this is the time dimension. You can divide it into, uh, let me see, uh, 12 time slot. I mean, it is a large time uh, frame. And then in the subcarrier, you have uh, uh, thousands of subcarrier. Uh, depends on how you group together. So uh, in LTE system, it's quite flexible. You can uh, uh, try to, uh, uh, you have a great granularity in that sense, in LTE. Okay. And uh, this uh, slide just going to show you that uh, this uh, scenario will happen also in the uplink as well. So in the uplink, uh, so now the transmitter is the mobile user. Okay, the receiver is the base station. So there's a user here which is uh, attached to the macro cell. So you will use your maximum power in order to deliver your signal reliably to the receiver. And at the same time, because of this maximum power, you will generate a very strong interference to the receiver at the small cell, which is quite close to you. And this uh, strong interference will anyway uh, degrade your signal quality, which is uh, in terms of SINR, signal to interference plus noise ratio. <laughs> so this is also, you will see some uh, difficult phenomenon 
in this uh, uplink scenario as well. So you have to deal with both cases. <coughs> so uh, in this uh, scope, uh, we propose to use a, a tool, uh, Gibbs Sampler, to do the joint optimization uh, because uh, 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 we see that uh, you may not be able to optimize the network, simply conduct power control there. So this is the detail. Uh, the system model is a simple one here. So I have the base station, for example, I would say uh, base station of user U is called BU, and then a base station of V is called BV. The path loss is uh, from the transmitter BU to U, so this is the path loss, and this is the path loss from BV, the base station of V to user U as well. So you have all the pairs, and uh, PV and PU correspond to the transmission power for U and V. So the SINR is a typical expression. You have the power for U, the path loss correspondingly, and the noise term is here at the receiver of U, and this is the sum of interference due to the transmission power for user V, the other user, and the path loss corresponding from this uh, transmitter to the user U here. So simply it's the power, the signal, interference, and noise. So uh, the chip memory we simply uh, take the expression of uh, channel uh, uh, capacity, so you take the log utility there, and then with a uh, frequency band in the set. So this is the model, and we are going to optimize uh, the network, and the uh, objective function is that uh, we are going to, uh, instead of maximizing the sum of throughput, which you can do, for example, just uh, maximize the sum of all the throughput, which is a summation of all the U, we are going to minimize, in fact, uh, this uh, sum of the inverse, which is the aggregated transmission delay. So RU refers to the achievable array at the user U, and one of our array refers to the delay at this user per bit of, and uh, this is going to minimize the sum. The objective is that uh, two first it will be able to provide a certain level of fairness, which uh, people call it the potential delay fairness. And secondly, it is for co uh, mathematical convenience in order to deploy Gibbs Emperor to implement in that way. And in the coming slide, I will call uh, this uh, objective function energy according to the Gibbs uh, terminology. And uh, what is the difference between uh, minimize uh, this uh, delay sum and maximize the sum of the utility over all U? It is about fairness. If you consider you would like to maximize the sum of total user, just uh, this part, sum of all you, you can give all the resources power to one user. So we should have, uh, for example, if you need SNR, the other you just give zero resources. Then your sum will be maximized. Because one is zero, the other is infinity. The sum is many infinity. But, you, but this is not a good solution to this uh, utility function, because uh, uh, at the same time, if let's say you, you have a ray in, in the first case, you will say, okay, this is a good solution because the sum of this two is infinitive, so this is perfect. But if I look at the, another manner, which uh, this will give you infinity delay, and uh, uh, this uh, D2, <coughs> this inverse of this one, will give you zero delay. And this sum will give you infinite delay as well. So which means that a, a good solution in the sense of sum optimization is not a good solution in the terms of this minimization problems. The, the problem there is that, uh, yes, it is maximized, but there's no fairness there. Because one gets zero, the other gets infinity. Okay. So uh, there are also solutions, uh, different objective functions uh, in terms of optimization, which uh, depends on uh, your purpose there. So uh, the proposal here is uh, simply we are going to deal with uh, P, the power location, B, the base station, which you are going to attach to, which channel you are going to use. Uh, note that uh, the transmission power here, we consider it, it is uh, discrete, so which means uh, you, the power is uh, on power level. For example, 0 dB, 1 dB is not continuous. And so all this uh, you can consider in terms of integer problem. Okay, so nothing is continuous in a continuous domain. And uh, 
this gives you an example how to use the tool here. So, for example, if, let's consider we are working in the linear regime. So, which means that uh, your array of a user is proportional to the SNR. Then I will may write uh, the cost function simply in terms of one over SNR. So now I may simply go to uh, minimize this uh, utility function with some inverse of SNR. And uh, certainly you can consider in more general this. Uh, if I uh, look at the definition of the proportional delay fairness, then uh, I can have uh, this uh, utility function uh, in terms of minimize uh, this exponential function. So it's just a mathematical trick. So the target, what I'm going to do is to minimize this one. The reason is uh, for medical convenience to use the Gibbs sample. Law. So with this notation, I'm going to minimize the cost function, which we call the global utility or global energy. So one of my sign R uh, is given by this uh, uh, expression, uh, just the inverse of SINR. So this is the signal, and then the noise, and then the arc. So it's just the inverse of the definition there, one of the, one over SINR. Okay, I just sub to you. There's nothing uh, uh, difference between the previous expression. And then I uh, rewrite this expression in terms of this form, which uh, is just uh, equivalent. So I sum all the terms, uh, represent them in terms of these two items. The first one is uh, sum over all u. I take the noise, just to take it there for a little reason. Okay, and then this is a signal, and I take a b into uh, here. So this is just pair up of all the uv, uv. Okay, if you imagine this is uh, a matrix, okay, u, v, u, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, in the square matrix, then uh, this is just pair up of all the terms. I just take all the terms, put it into here, there's nothing different between this expression and that. But why I would like to write it there? Because if I write this form, I know it derived from a potential function, which uh, we can define the local energy for each user in terms of the U. <coughs> and then I can deploy the Gibbs sample to do this optimization. So which means that uh, from this uh, uh, global utility function, then I write my local energy function in this way, <coughs> which is first then n comes from here, and this uh, comes from uh, this term, and then this uh, term, I just put it there, and uh, uh, everything is just comes from the global energy. And we can see that uh, this local energy connected to each uh, user, which is a node in a graph, has two components. The first, this is equivalent to noise, interference, and signal, which is the inverse of SINR which we call the selfish path. And the second term is the normalized interference from you to the other user. So this is your impact to the other user. So we should we call it the altruistic path. In terms of power control, we can see that uh, if you increase your power, which is PU here, then this term will be decreased. So you want to use a maximum power in order to decrease your cost function, and in order to increase your SNR, at the same time when you increase the, your power aggressively or selfishly, then you will increase your interference to the other user. So you have to make a balance between the two terms. One, you cannot use a too high power just for yourself. Uh, at the same time, you have to care about the other. So this is the two terms you have to balance. And with this notation, uh, we can represent the network in terms of a graph, in this graph, the node of the user, the node is the user, so for each u or v, and for each node you have the state, which is in terms of power, in that channel, and with which variation you are going to attach to. And in this node, the edge of the graph is the neighborship, neighborhood of, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood of the two nodes. So if one node will inter the transmission to one node will interfere one the other, then you will edge between the two. So this is the graph representing uh, this <coughs> network. And uh, I will go into uh, this a little bit, but not uh, all the details. Uh, this uh, slide is going to explain the, the local energy and the details, uh, how to derive it and how to check it. So we call that we are going to minimize uh, this uh, uh, global energy. 
and we see that uh, this uh, global energy is derived from a potential uh, function, which are uh, B, which uh, in fact, uh, you, if you take some up, about, among all this uh, potential function, you will get a global energy. And uh, this uh, potential function uh, has the following uh, expression. So if you consider in this uh, potential function, there's only one element, u, then uh, you, the expression, the potential function is uh, this element, comes from here. And if you look at this graph in terms of a quick size 2, then uh, your expression here, which in fact uh, is this term, the pair up. And you don't have a, 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 a quick size of 3 in this uh, graph. With uh, this uh, structure, then you can apply uh, this uh, Gibbs emperor to conduct a uh, distributed optimization in the network in order to minimize. And uh, uh, this, there's a very good uh, reference book in here, which is uh, on the Gibbs field. You can check with it. And after you check uh, those, uh, the structure of the network, and then we are sure that uh, this uh, graph can be optimized, which in the sense of minimization of the global energy by conduct local optimization on each term. But uh, these uh, local nodes are not isolated. They are connected to one another. So there's an interacting particle in the sense of an interacting particle such that uh, global, uh, the, the global network will be optimized in that way. So just recall the memory. Uh, we have the, this expression, which is in terms of local energy. So what does it mean by this local energy? We are, what we are going to tune. So if I consider power control only, then the only variable in this uh, expression is uh, PU, the power, for U. So for each uh, user, then we are going to tune this uh, parameter with respect to uh, the coefficient, which is given by power flows and uh, other interference. So you will do the sampling on this array variable in order to uh, have a annealing on this part. And uh, this is just a description of the operation uh, the algorithm uh, in our implementation, which is in terms of power control. So in uh, each time interval, we will randomly choose a user from the population. And then with respect to the local energy, of the user, which is uh, this expression in the previous slide. And then we have the corresponding Gibson uh, probability distribution, which uh, is uh, right in here. So here is your local energy, normalized by a temperature, a constant called temperature, and with uh, put into the exponential function minus. And then this is just a normalization constant, which you, you may for, you can forget it here, for example. So you are going to choose a P which will be respect to this probability, okay? So which, uh, if you look at this example, then you realize that uh, the low energy, when this value is low, then your probability is in fact high. So consider uh, energy is zero, then this term is one, then your probability is one. If this uh, energy is infinite, then exponential minus infinity gives you zero. So your probability is zero. So you are going to choose a state of uh, power PU with respect to this uh, probability distribution. And everybody do so iteratively. And after a long run, the system will converge to a state which is optimal in the sense of the network. So this is the operation and the implementation in our paper. And we know there are two uh, convergency properties. When you conduct this uh, deep sampling with respect to this uh, probability law, so the probability, uh, probability one is that you can start from any arbitrary uh, state, uh, doesn't matter where is the initial state, give a fixed temperature, a constant T, which is the parameter to tune the system, you will converge to a stationary distribution with bigger low energy. Another property is that <coughs> if you do proper and new end, which means you decrease temperature D, T gradually, then you will go to a minimum state, which is uh, globally optimal for this whole network. And the two advantage of this uh, operation, first, you do local operation. Uh, the uh, configure the, the operation is uh, independent of the initial state. Sometimes uh, some algorithms are very sensitive to initial configuration. And second, you only need uh, some uh, local information that change between your labels. And finally, we know that uh, this can be done for any uh, 
uh, uh, uh, parameters you want in this uh, uh, methodology. So it doesn't really matter uh, what is your parameter there. You can do for any variable there. And uh, some people may ask a question, why would we like to do this uh, uh, probabilistic control, but not simply do something like uh, best response in terms of a game theory or uh, in games? The major difference is that, uh, well, if you, the, the best response here means that, okay, you look at this uh, call function or utility function, you choose the one which maximizes the utility or minimize the cost, or which gives you the highest probability. You don't do, uh, you just uh, go to there deterministically. The other way is that uh, you do it uh, by deep sampling, choose uh, by the probability distribution. The problem with the best response in this uh, case is that uh, we know that uh, if you do the best response, you can only go to a Nash equilibrium, which is not necessarily an optimal solution. And secondly, you know that uh, we know that uh, the solution the co is, uh, could be very far away from the optimal solution. It's, it is unbound. So there's not a strong guarantee in that sense. And the uh, uh, Gibson method gives you an approach in terms of stochastic uh, optimization. So you have a chance to escape the, from the local track with some probability, so which could help you to go and explore other points, you know, to go to a better solution. So this is a major difference. And people may ask, oh, why you take uh, Gibbs but not the other from this uh, family? And yes, uh, there are other choices as well. I'm not going to say Gibbs is the best or it could be the only choice. And for example, uh, this, uh, if you take the Metropolis uh, sampler, which for example, uh, in this, uh, use the simple random walk, uh, we know that it's uh, less efficient uh, you choose the, uh, the, uh, the state transition simply in a uniform distribution, it will be more uh, chaotic and you will converge much uh, less efficiently. And we know that uh, Gibbs uh, will converge uh, much faster comparatively. <coughs> and so uh, that's why we use uh, Gibbs instead of uh, other choice at this moment. But uh, we didn't explore all the other pro uh, options, which uh, there's a potential there. And uh, in the, this uh, operation, we consider to use a, a random scanning. So you pick a user randomly among the population, and people may consider to use a more systematic way, which is called systematic scan. So you pick one uh, in a runaway fashion, or for example, in a deterministic uh, sequence. So let's say you pick the user one with ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and repeat all the time in a very uh, systematic way. The other option is that you Randomly pick one among all, just uh, no matter what's the sequence, it could be a periodical. And we, the fact is that uh, both of them will converge to the same uh, distribution. So there's no uh, difference in terms of the convergency. But uh, in, in practice, what is the performance? We are not pretty sure at this moment. But uh, they could have some different, uh, uh, some discussion on this point, how to. Uh, converge files. And the general question is that how can we accelerate uh, this algorithm in order to converge files and go to optimal solution uh, quickly enough? And uh, we know that uh, Gibbs will converge uh, in fact quite fast uh, geometrically. Uh, there's some literature on this uh, point we can figure out. And uh, certainly there are also other issues. For example, uh, if you are uh, uh, choose uh, multiple users at the same time, two or let's say many, or in the extremal case, you take all of them at the same time and do the iteration. What, what will happen? And in this extremal case, you can imagine that uh, the system will not perform very good because uh, you take all of them and then this have very outdated information. So everybody just do something random, more or less. So there could be some problem if you do this uh, sampling and with multiple users at the same time, I mean exactly at the same time. And uh, there are also some details we have to deal with in terms of uh, implementation. When the information required to compute the local energy is corrupted by errors, what will happen? If there's some delay or the information is outdated, what will happen to this convergency? We have to investigate uh, these problems. And in general, it is about the convergency speed. 
let's say if your error is small, and it could be still, uh, for example, zero bin and Gaussian, it could still converge if the noise is bound. But it, it may take much longer time to go there. And finally, I will show you a few examples uh, numerically. Uh, so we implement the uh, ecophone. So we have this uh, geographic location area with the small cell randomly distributed like a Poisson pump process. And we put a uh, two mic compensation <coughs> fixed. And then we uh, assume that uh, the mic hole with uh, strong power, the mic hole with small, sorry, the small cell with a small power. And uh, the power level setting is something quite standard for the neurality. Uh, the step size, uh, each phase station have a K of channel, one, two, three, four, five, for example. And we increase the number of user. The noise uh, level is just some constant uh, with uh, uh, 20 megahertz and noise speaker, etc. And the user is randomly distributed. And we compare uh, two configurations. The first is that uh, heuristic. So uh, the user attachment in this heuristic scheme is that we consider a user will attach to a base station, which give him or her the strongest single power. Okay, so you you go you attach to the one give you the best signal quality. Don't care about the other connections. And in terms of channel assignment, if a base station let's say you have two channel, if you have multiple user, you have user one take channel one, user two take channel two. You start to take channel one, just a round robin, to make it even. And the power is just use the maximum in order to make it uh, as strong as possible. And you have a minimum power constraint, like zero for one top uh, watt. And then we do, uh, this is the initial state, which is uh, by the uh, heuristic scheme. So, and this is the after optimization by our algorithm. So in the figure, you have two base stations, which is the macro base station. You have the small cell, which is the blue. Then you have the, the dot, some user, which is randomly distributed, randomly. And the collection refers to the user attachment. So this user will attach to the macro, and this user will attach to the small cell. And the thickness of the line refers to the power string. So it is not very clear here, so uh, because of the figure. And the color refers to the two channels. So I consider we have two orthogonal channels here. So this color refers to channel one, the black refers to channel two. So for example, in this example three, you have this configuration, and then after the uh, gift sampling uh, optimization, you have the new configuration like this. So first, it's <coughs> obvious that uh, the user are uh, more distributed, uh, connected to a different base station, and the interference scenario is much better after this optimization, and we see a quite significant improvement not only in terms of the bit per second per hertz, and also in terms of power uh, value. But uh, one of the reasons uh, which uh, the power efficiency is improved so much is simply because uh, in this configuration, we simply use maximum power for each user, which is overused uh, in this uh, by default configuration. So it is not fair, very fair in that sense. But you see that uh, the algorithm is able to tune the power uh, gradually in order to go into the Proper configuration. And I have some uh, details uh, which is going to show you uh, the convergency speed in this uh, small network. So, this is the number of iterations in terms of time, uh, discrete time, and this is the uh, global utility energy, global energy we are going to minimize. So, we decrease gradually. And clearly, uh, the global energy is not a it's not what we would like to optimize. In fact, in terms of quality of service, it's just a medical uh, tools there, which we are going to minimize. And what we are maybe more interested in is the aggregated delay, which is the performance of the user. And this is in the very beginning. And after that, we decouple. You see the attachment is, uh, is quite different after the optimization here. And we also look at the distribution of the user performance. So this is the performance of the user distribution with a minimum delay, a maximum delay, and a mean delay, and the standard deviation. And the key information here is that you see that the mean is uh, increased. So the delay is increased. The worst case is also decreased. So because we take care of the fairness, so the standard deviation is reduced as well. 
And if you look at the user throughput, you will see this curve uh, shift increase. So the mean is increased. The minimum is uh, increased as well. So this is the throughput, CPF. And we look at that each user and compare what happened before the optimization and after optimization. So this is in terms of delay. So you will see the delay, uh, most of them do, uh, reduce. And some of them, uh, in fact, uh, is increased. For example, uh, this user has a delay increased. So he has to sacrifice the configuration in order to help the other user. So there's a fairness constraint there. And uh, total power uh, consuming in this system is decreased as well, a little bit. Uh, so we increase the number of user uh, a little bit and then see what's happened and the phenomenon is more or less the same. And uh, this is just a very naive uh, uh, drawing, a uh, very simple simulation there. And uh, we see a quite similar phenomenon. This is on the increase of the throughput, uh, decrease of delay. Uh, we see a better configuration in terms of the uh, power channel selection and user attachment. And this is the power consumption, which we are also interested to know. And we give a tool called orthogonal channel to see what happened in that sense. So, uh, then we see that uh, in the new configuration after the optimization, uh, you will utilize the two channel more efficiently, and this is about the conversion rate uh, delay uh, performance. Uh, this is more or less the same about the CDF improvement and delay decrease. So we just go to check, and uh, I will draw the conclusion here. So in this work, we deal with. Uh, the network optimization, and we propose a, a deep builder algorithm based on deep sampling. So the key uh, performance indicator is in terms of SNR, user fairness, and power consumption. This is what we care in several networks. And uh, it deal with the small and macro cell. So the algorithm doesn't matter what is your power capability, it just uh, it allows a different uh, constraint there. And you could do a uh, joint optimization, in fact, you also can do a separate optimization. So for example, you do optimization in terms of user attachment first, and do a second round on uh, channel selection, and then finally do the third round in power control separately. But uh, there could be some problems if you do it uh, separately, because uh, you don't really know which one should do first, what is the proper sequences. And uh, there's a paper on this uh, topic in terms of a uh, Wi-Fi uh, network. Uh, sometimes if you're doing the wrong se sequences, in fact, the optimization doesn't work. And uh, also, uh, we can uh, use uh, this methodology for other parameter uh, optimization, which in terms of, uh, for example, the pre-coding cohort, and choose uh, which is the right uh, antenna for this uh, uh, multi-cell processing uh, optimization problem. So it is quite robust. and they use uh, different parameters, and which comes from uh, uh, the, this category, which people may call the interacting particle system, or Monte Carlo mapper, or uh, uh, simulator and neural. So uh, that's all of my presentation. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, welcome for any questions. A consequence of your uh, fairness criterion is that you serve all mobiles at the same time, right? Yes, all of them are active. So, have you considered other schemes where you serve, you may serve only a subset of the mobiles and apply scheduling to enforce fairness? Because your, your, net, your, your problem is, is, is non convex, so you may expect a significant gains by scheduling. Yeah, you mean in terms of time scheduling? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's say uh, if we even we take into account in that case, if I go to uh, uh, yeah, for example, in terms of uh, Yeah. For example, in this map, you have the time domain here and frequency domain there. So you do time time schedule. But if you 
just lower it one time slot, you still have multiple transmitter receiver pairs. So in that sense, uh, no matter what, well, even you, you, you maximize the sum or whatever, the cost function is still non-complex. If you look at the one time slot, because of this uh, uh, SNR expression. So you, yes, uh, it, it's true that we can do time scheduling, which will improve. This will be one of the optimization uh, capability in this map, which could improve the performance. But the problem will still be non-complex in general. Otherwise, I have a, co a question about uh, <coughs> the scheme f that you use for the comparison. So you can, can you go back to the slide where you have the six pictures uh, <coughs> for the before and after scenario? Okay. It's from there, you clearly see one for thing. Yeah. Sorry, I have some uh, slides. Yeah, just a few more <laughs> slides. Yes, uh, <laughs> you mean this uh, example one, two, three? Yeah, right? okay, this yeah. one. Mm -hmm. So because here, <coughs> what you compare with is that you start by associating each user to the base station uh, who gives him the, the, the biggest power. So basically, you, you end up with all the users which are to get, uh, attached to the uh, base station with the macro cell. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you end up in a station which is much more distributed where each user are attached <coughs> to the, to the, to the macro cell. Yes. So you also mentioned that you could, for instance, choose on the criterion like uh, minimize the back loss. Mm -hmm. and I guess, but uh, I'm definitely working on that, so I might be wrong. That if you start with that criterion, also in the solution before, you would attack, you have a much more distributed uh, scenario in which each user attaches to the micro base station which is closer to him. Yes, right? you are right. So, and in this case, how much would it differ from using the, I mean, the simplest criterion to, to, the, to the sampling, to the new sampling procedure? Okay, so. So if you have done any. any <coughs> yeah, the, uh, the performance, <coughs> if you do so, is still quite very suboptimal. If you attach, uh, you simply consider the path loss. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, if you do this, uh, in fact, uh, you will bring a big problem to uh, the user quality of service as well. You just uh, attach to the one, uh, attach to you very close. But at the same time, you may experience a very strong difference because mm -hmm. of the macro. So in that, uh, even in a heuristic game, you have to take into account the power uh, level as well. So uh, usually we we we, we have uh, we have either uh, choose the one to give you the strongest power, which is the power times the power loss. Otherwise, uh, you choose uh, the one give you the strongest SNR. But mathematically, this two is equivalent. But my question was more. Uh, do do you gain something so it is different? The, the time to converge the solution is shorter. For instance, if you start from different initial condition, which may be closer to, uh, let's say, uh, it's somehow closer uh, to, we, to that. We didn't compare that. I mean, in, in the simulation, uh, we choose uh, this configuration uh, first and it's uh, by default. And secondly, in fact, uh, for this optimization uh, skill, we don't care. For it's, uh, it doesn't matter, it depends on the initial okay. state. But you, you could go to that maybe much fast, uh, faster, uh, a few iteration less. It could be I, I have a related question. Uh, is there a technical possibility to know if a cell is small or big? I mean, uh, technically, the receiver, can it know that this signal comes from a small or a big cell? Uh, in terms of the system, it could be. I mean, uh, because you, when you listen to the parallel channel, you could uh, have the information from the base station. I was wondering whether this information could help the optimization. I mean, knowing that this is a smaller or a big set, perhaps, mm -hmm. and what a related question is we could have a heuristic mm -hmm. that says that uh, connect to the smallest cell that is closer to you, mm -hmm. and perhaps this heuristic could be close in performance with, uh, I don't know, it would be interesting to compare with the heuristic that it's likely to, to be better okay. than the. Yeah, uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to 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 say uh, whether it it will it is good or not in that sense. You, you may consider different strategy. You when you cross the small cell, then you okay, I take the small cell, forget the network cell. But uh, in terms of transition of the whole network, you you have to deal with multiple users and multiple nodes and what is the interaction between one and other. So. Uh, 
we have to find a way to interact all these nodes uh, together and to join them together to see what should be the right configuration after all. So certainly, uh, uh, the heuristic one would be a very simple, easy to adopt. Mm -hmm. But uh, the performance, we are not very sure. So uh, it's a bit of the same uh, kind of question. Mm -hmm. uh, you started to form a, uh, so your starting point is a, a very bad configuration somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a, a large uh, in increase in the performance at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, did you start to, s did you also think about other starting points, a bit like the one uh, said by uh, Dario, uh, 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 to, to see uh, yes. if, uh, if there is a, uh, sorry for <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 the same, uh, to see if the difference is still large and you still have some gain or if finally uh, the, the gain is uh, not so, so large. Yeah, so I can comment on this uh, uh, by, for example, if I look at this one. Yeah, so let's say if we take a good initial configuration of the network, Let's say Optimo already, and then uh, we can expect that uh, we don't need to go into more iterations. Uh, even let's say you are here, so uh, if you look at the CP <coughs> function and probability distribution uh, there, then you are already in a good state. So the jumping from this point to other will be uh, less. Then you the, go the, the, the question is uh, maybe there are some. Um, Heuristic that can find something which is close to the optimum. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so why not to apply them? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the situation is that today we don't have this <laughs> asking. <laughs> we, <don't, laughs> we don't have at this moment. And uh, in fact, this is just one of the techniques uh, from this family. Uh, people also consider to use a game theory approach, gradient uh, mapper, pretty uh, uh, convex optimization, uh, and we have compared to one another. But for example, in terms of game theory, we know that performance uh, is not that good for this kind of level. Because what, what you observe here is that uh, we, in, at the end, we attach to, uh, generally, we attach to the, sm to the small cells, the closest, somehow. So uh, if you start from the, uh, if the idea at the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I first attach to the closest and then see to what, what happens, uh, maybe it can be interesting to, to see uh, what kind of gain you have uh, by doing that. It could be, yeah. And sometimes we don't know the right order of the optimization. Do the power control first, or do the use attachment? Uh, yeah. We have some experience yeah. in terms of network operation, but in general, in we, we have the sequence is also very important. So go for it. Does it mean, uh, sorry, yes. that uh, the more you have mi micro cells, somehow, the more uh, user will connect to micro cells? I mean, somehow it's uh, you put entropy, you can resign from uh, the big cells. Yes, uh, ultimately it could happen that uh, when you put more and more the small cell, I mean a uh, high density. Because even in, in the, the, the example, uh, afterwards, can really few users connect to, to, to the big cell. Yes, uh, in this kind of uh, overlap of the layer, I mean this is the heterogeneous network, uh, we you can see that uh, the macro cell, the function of this macro cell is to cover the, uh, is to fill the coverage hole. So there is a hole somewhere with no coverage due to the small cell because you don't, it's not dense uh, enough. Okay. So but, but the, other, the, function the, the other is operating like a micro cell because it, the power is reduced so to avoid interference. Yes. So to avoid the penalization of the other. So it's just one that. Uh, the poor guy was far away from all the yeah. cells, so there was no option for him that to attach to the BS. Yes. But the other is operating even I mean it's even smaller than the other small cells, right? Yes. In the bottom right. Mm -hmm. The the red no, I mean the red the red uh, in the BS macro cell, uh, the red uh, I cannot point it. That's the about three hundred, three hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in your render. It's a user. No, no, the, 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 the micro The micro The micro This one is pretty small. It's yes. smaller than the, the oh. figure above, which is okay. a small cell. So the circle here, doesn't mean uh, the cell is large or small. Uh, so I allow the basic uh, still have the, the capability of uh, maximum power, 40. Yeah, right. The power is yeah, much power reduced. Decrease, yes. And it's lower, port, I mean, lower not necessarily. Yes, but, uh, the, the transmission will, will Reduce the power as well because it is not necessary to use a strong power. 
And for this user, in order to reduce the interference to the so other. What like is saying, yeah. more or less. So finally, this will be a small cell. The two, the two examples. For that. Yeah. So it will be a small cell finally. Can you just comment about, about the speed of convergence? Mm -hmm. Because you said, I mean, we, we have seen the number of iteration, mm -hmm. but uh, how does an it, how, how long an iteration last? So, what is the time scale of the thing? Uh, in, for example, in uh, let me take a larger. Uh, for example, here we have uh, <coughs> 74, sorry, 64 uh, point users and two of kind of channel. And uh, uh, in power level, uh, in, for a small, there are 10 steps. For the, the bigger one is uh, 40, 400. So, okay, the, the, di the dimension of the optimization space uh, is not very large here. Uh, the number of iteration in terms of time is about a few hundreds, I would say. You see here, it's about 100. Yeah, no, but what I mean is that when you change, for instance, the cell, when you change the net of the power, then you have to re measure again the yeah. all the cell. I do not know how long is, I mean, is, is an, each uh, iteration is instantaneous or it should oh, last? In this, uh, uh, in this uh, simulation, uh, it is kind of timeless. In, in practice, practice, in yeah, practice, in practice uh, millisecond. Okay, so it's fast. Yeah, millisecond. That, that was, I have no idea whether it was second or millisecond. Yeah. And this is in a situation where the users are static or static? static. So if you have mobility, every time they move, you have to redo everything. Yes. Uh, in this uh, setup uh, simulation, uh, which is everything is static, uh, and uh, it's, yeah, it's exactly what you say. Uh, if you have the user moving around, so for example, you do an uh, iteration, uh, optimization first, and then let's say uh, this user is moving, and then uh, you have to re-optimize, re and then uh, you, uh, the attachment will be switched among <coughs> one and other, and you will do it, uh, uh, you have to deal with the dynamic case. And we, this optimization uh, is robust in the sense that uh, in the sense that uh, you will do this iteration uh, quite automatically, and it doesn't matter where you start from, the initial state, uh, we hope that uh, it will converge fast and go into that, adapt to the environment fast enough. But it is a question. Yeah. Now, whether it was a single user movie, and uh, the cha mm -hmm. everything changes on the. Uh, it depends on. If this user is quite solid from the other, the other will not change much. Mm -hmm. But if they are close. Yes, you will. But this, you will have to scan uh, the whole network. Uh, you can every, uh, for each one, you will do the iteration locally. So you can imagine this user, if it's isolated, uh, this, uh, it doesn't impact this user, so you will not change anything there. But this user will be iterating uh, from time to time because of the change there. So only one user iterate. You don't have to change all the system. Yeah, if, uh, if the graph is isolated, I mean, not isolated, I mean, quite separate, the, inter the impact from one another is quite separate. Then you, you can imagine that it doesn't happen. The change doesn't happen uh, to the other nodes uh, in the long run. Yeah, there's a question for my. Yes. Uh, can you have an assessment on how sensitive your <coughs> algorithm is? Because uh, if, if some node makes some error in measurement, then how do we affect it? Yeah, we, we, I don't have the slide here, but we do have uh, some uh, uh, simulation result when the when, uh, when, when the information, uh, when the cost function is corrupt with the noise, yes, the algorithm will now go to the optimal solution, uh, even after a long run. Because you, you, you can imagine in a small case, you have no information, everything is wrong, you just do it randomly, finally. So everybody do something randomly, so you will not go to there. And uh, if it's just a corrupter to a certain level found the noise, you can still go to there, the hyper -key. Can I also ask something? Yes. Uh, you mentioned the price of anarchy and comparing uh, your mechanism with the best response. Yes. Uh, you assume that the best response is optimization only on the selfish part or also on the global uh, optimization part? In the, uh, for, for the global. Also, so, 
So the results with the best responses, but even if everybody tries to optimize the best for the whole uh, system. Yes, so the, the, uh, the example is that uh, you, you consider now you have the network, you have the local cost for yourself, you choose the best for yourself, done, the other do so. So, so you optimize only the selfish part of your, uh, uh, it, of your equation. Even if it is not selfish, it doesn't work. Even you are going to, even if you, you take care of all, uh, find the best, uh, maximize, uh, minimize uh, this value, which is an optimal one, it doesn't it's still the, the wrong decision. Finally. It is still some optimal. So in, in the very beginning, we, we consider, okay, why you do it uh, in a stochastic way, you, because you will go to a wrong, to a, to a worse uh, form of a certain probability. Why don't you take the best for yourself? It doesn't work. You can, uh, we can put that uh, uh, best response. Best response. So intuitively, what is the difference? That in the best response, everybody wakes up and makes optimization, while in your system somehow you organize? Because you will get uh, trapped in the local pond. You go into local pond, but which is not, no. You go into the, uh, the, the configuration, which is good from your point of view, but it is not a global optimal. You will always, always stay there. That's why you go to local pond. You will not jump from the pond. So or, it, this is not only uh, uh, using this uh, and you can also have this concept in other, for example, even in commerce optimization problem, you allow a certain probability sometimes in order to go out because you know if the problem is non convex, you use a commerce optimization, you will get <coughs> tracked in the local. So they have some uh, relaxing, relaxation uh, factor in order to jump, which could be wrong, wrong, wrong decision at that time, but it could happen to be better. But, but it is hard to control the parameters. <coughs> How is this sensitive to the condition distribution that you're sampling? So can you find other distribution that uh, let you converge faster? Or, I mean, the, the exponential one you use, it's uh, really the best. Uh, we, we don't know if this is the, the ultimate best one. Uh, yeah, it could be, yeah, other choice. Mm. But uh, this one, if we do it compared to the other, we know that uh, it uh, will have a convergence rate which is quite fast in terms of exponential uh, speed. The intuition there is that you are sampling the guy with, which is making the largest harm to the globe, to the minimization of the global energy. Is it true or not? Uh, no. Everybody has to, to go into this game. To, yeah. Well, yeah. So probabilistically, you will select somebody more often than. Uh, yeah. This is also a open. I would say an open. Uh, question in the, in the implementation here, what we do is we pick one new vehicle. doesn't matter who is more favorable or who is the bad guy or who is the good guy. We just pick up randomly. And we are not pretty sure if you choose the bad guy you think, which is the, who hurt the system most, whether this is good or bad. Because it, maybe you will go into local get check somewhere. But yeah, it's a good question how to deal with uh, Make general, and this is a very starting point more than this I got the feeling that it's good to use a lot of phantom cells, but in terms of uh, delay, when you add more phantom cells, how do you do the and over. Yes. And that will be a critical. So this is for a study, a real study scenario. No. This is uh, where it shows. So we know we, we will we have to use kind of small cell. It will happen in the future everywhere. You have no way to escape from small cell. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Suppose uh, yeah. We, we we have to use small cell and then we have to deal with mobility management. We have to deal with handover issues. Uh, you cannot uh, give up some small cell. Your capacity growth will just spread, and uh, you cannot maintain the network anymore because the capacity growth is very very high. And people consider small cell is the hope of future cellular networks.
So everybody invest into that at this moment. No more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.